Hey y'all, thanks for joining us again. I'm Shannon Hicks with the North Little Rock Public Library and I am back with another Real Talk Story Time. Now, it is summertime and we're in the middle of our summer reading program, so of course, I had to find a Real Talk that would go along with our theme, which is Oceans of Possibilities. So I found a great book about somebody we need to know about who helped to save a very important place in our country. Today, we're reading Saving American Beach, the story of African-American environmentalist Maveen Betch. And it is by Heidi Tylene King and illustrated by Ekua Holmes. So, let's get started. As a girl, Maveen Betch loved the beach. She loved the whoosh of its waves, its blue sky stretching to forever, and the creatures swimming in its tangy sea. But Maveen couldn't go to just any beach. Because of her skin, silken and butter brown, she couldn't eat in most restaurants or visit most bathrooms. There was even a rope in the ocean. One side said colored, the other white. Something must be done, her great grandfather said. And so, Mr. Abraham Lincoln Lewis bought a beach. It was an ocean paradise where his family and other black people could swim, picnic, and build sandcastles. He believed that a beach should be open to everyone. In no time, American Beach was hopping. Maveen adored her beach. At water's edge, the sandy shore became a stage. For each performance, the wind whispered an endless melody of gull cries and laughter. It made her heart sing. When she grew up, Maveen discovered the same music in the opera. She left her beloved beach to sing stories around the world. From London to Berlin, audiences sprang to their feet, demanding an encore. Brava, they cried, beating the stage with their hands, whipping velvet curtains into rippling waves. But after the crowds went home and the stage lights dimmed, she longed for her beach. When her mother became sick, she packed her suitcase and returned home to care for her. Soon after, her mother died. Maveen spent her days sitting along the shore wrapped in a blanket of sadness. She sat and sat. So much had changed since her girlhood days on American Beach. Summer houses crumbled, bleached white as fish bones. Plastic bags littered the dunes, tangled in seagrass. The rope dividing the ocean had disappeared. There was no more need for a place like American Beach. Determined to save what remained, Maveen became the caretaker for American Beach. She picked up trash, planted trees, and remembered colorful stories about its early days when Zora Neale Hurston sunbathed on the sand and Ray Charles juked the local joints. She made American Beach her home. Each morning, she bathed in the Atlantic Ocean. Each night, she went to sleep on a chaise lounge to a lullaby of lapping waves. When she needed to think, she climbed atop the beach's 60 foot high sand dune, her sacred place, one of the tallest dunes on America's East Coast. Strong and soft, she named it Nana, a Ghanaian word for grandmother. Before long, builders eyed American Beach as a perfect place for condos. The staccato of jackhammers replaced the whoosh of waves. Trilling backhoes silenced the wind's endless melody. Maveen was broken hearted. Nana cried out to her in her dreams, something must be done. She drew a line in the sand. Maveen was saving more than a beach. She pinned protest buttons to her clothes, wore seashell necklaces, and in a burst of creative protest, she grew her hair seven feet long and knotted together, a thick rope of silver gray. 
She draped it over her arm or carried it around in a suitcase. Some days, her hair reminded her of an elephant's trunk. On other days, the curve of the Niger River in Africa. It was hard to tell where the beach lady stopped and her beach began. The madder she grew, the braver she got. She squabbled with city commissioners, wrote letters to lawmakers, marched to Tallahassee to fuss at the governor. Her letters went unanswered. The beach lady stood in the scorching heat alone. No one cared what the prima donna of protest had to say. More than a few people questioned the beach lady's demands. Others were proud of her pluck. Years passed. Soon, all that was left was a sliver of sand, cocooned by palmettos, hugged by live oaks. People missed the beach. The beach lady inspired others to write their own letters and paint their own picket signs. Together, they petitioned the president, George W. Bush, to sign a law protecting American beach forever. When the beach lady died, friends and family scattered her ashes on Nana. Her wish came true to spend forever enjoying American beach where a piece of paradise remains and the melody continues. The end. And I just wanna let y'all know that's really not the end of the story. Let me tell you what happened to Nana and American Beach. Because of the beach lady's efforts, Nana and American Beach became part of the National Park Service and after her death in 2005, a site on the National Register of Historic Places and Florida Black Heritage Trail. The Trust for Public Land also bought beachfront property to preserve forever. That is so important because that means that it is protected forever. So I really love this story. I thought it had a lot to do with our theme, Oceans of Possibility. And I liked it because it shows that if you feel strongly about something, you can just be one person and one person can make a change. So I hope you enjoyed that part of the story. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave us a comment or share it with us with your friends and family. We love hearing your feedback. If you have a recommendation for a book we should feature on Real Talk, drop us a line. Also, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or our website, nlrlibrary.org. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more of our great content. If you'll click the bell, you can get notifications for all of our upcoming videos. Remember, at Layman Library, we're more than just books. We'll see you next time. And as always, keep reading and keep thinking.